but here she is. It's a beautiful kayak. <laughs> and this video has been a bit of a long time coming. I've had this thing sitting in the garage for a few weeks now and haven't had a chance to sort of get on it. And now that I finally do have a chance, I kind of don't have a chance. All right, we're on. Uh, yeah, sorry I've been uh, absent for the last week and a two or two. Um, yeah, just kids' craziness, getting back to school, hop from school holidays, it's just been mayhem. So, uh, just uh, finding our feet again and getting back into the school routine. It's the first week back, plus Fox is sick. But I really keen to get this video up because it's such a cool kayak and I just want to get fishing on it and I want to give everyone a rundown before I start catching fish on it, So, which will hopefully be over the next day or two. But anyway, uh, yeah, I was hoping to do this talk, say, down at the beach or somewhere in a bit more of a picturesque place, but looks like we're doing it at home. But yes, managed to get myself uh, a new kayak. Very similar model, same model as the last one, which was a uh, Stealth Pro Fisher 475. But there's been some new additions and some changes over the last, say, I probably had my last one for two seasons. Um, but we'll do an overview of the kayak. The last video I did of this kayak actually has pretty much the same mods and I've gone into a little bit more detail on those videos. So go and check the other videos out. You pretty much get the idea of what I did to this one. Um, and it's just the explanations. Once you see sort of how I've done it and I walk through it, I think it'll be pretty self-explanatory. Most people know how to drill a hole, you know, and stuff like that. So uh, we'll start at the top, I guess, and we'll work our way down. I'll just flip this camera around and we'll work our way through the new kayak. Yeah, so she's a pretty amazingly sleek beast. Like I had a carbon fiber one last time and uh, I was very happy. I was happy with the improvement. I came from a fiberglass boat and so I got a little bit of a weight saving, but a lot of the weight saving in uh, this mold and the resins and everything has been done. So the carbon fiber only adds a little bit of a weight saving by about a kilo and a bit. But what it does do is it makes it a lot more rigid and when I'm even carrying it, I can feel that it's a lot stiffer and paddling it, it feels great on the water. So we've got our two bungs. I've put my orange colors. I did put this out to a vote, whether I go orange or green and orange won uh, quite convincingly. Green did get quite a bit of a look in, but yeah, nah, orange took over and it makes sense. I've always been the guy that had the orange and black kayak, so I'll stick with my colors. I quite like it and it is super visible. Like this thing stands out a mile away on the water. So that's always good. Uh, one of the new features is grab handles. There's two bungs up the front. One is for the main fish hatch and one is for the main hull. Uh, these new grab handles with the molded recess here is a new feature on the new mold, which is nice. Much easier to grab, a bit more rigid when you're grabbing it and moving it around. Uh, scratch pad, I actually added this scratch pad um, to cater for something, but we'll go into how I painted it and the ins and outs of that in a sec. A um, bit more of a clear scratch pad. Usually this whole section is the clear scratch pad which comes with the new 475s. That's a sticker. Uh, you got your bungees that go to the foot pedals, adjustable foot pedals depending on how long or short your legs are. Uh, got my camera there. These cool straps buckle down really nicely. I'll show you how they work in a second. But uh, oh, here's one that's actually buckled down while I undo it. Just undo those. This is the big feature of this uh, kayak, the main fish hatch, and it's a big deal. Uh, there's a gaff in there, probably should have taken that out, but we'll just chuck that up the front. If you're offshore kayak fishing and you have to deal with surf, there's nothing more nerve wracking than getting through with uh, rods and everything up or having to get out there with your rods all you know, taken apart and then re-rig out there while everyone else takes off and fishes out of these things. So getting through surf, you can get knocked off all your stuff is inside, fully rigged and safe, and it's a pretty big deal. And then you use this basically as like a workbench once you're out there. Like if you get a fish, you feed it in, it keeps it safe and out of your way, and doesn't hit, like it's not in danger of like slicing your legs up and things like that. Um, I'll close that for a second. Nice carbon fiber lid. Uh, this is the big improvement and the, the real game changer kind of element that I really wanted to upgrade to. It is a live bait tank. Now we'll just undo this, nice clear top so you can see how many livers you got. And once you look in there, I'll try and get the camera in here if it fits. Have a look around. <laughs> get it back out. 
So yeah, they, they basically live bait tank. It's got two inlets and, a, and an inlet and an outlet. You can pop those out. I had those in because I didn't want it to fill up while I was out last. And it basically stays dry completely. So you could use it as storage. But when you're ready to do liveies, you get your little pipe. You pop it in there. And that's the outlet. Ooh, something in there. Um, that's the outlet. And this is the inlet here. Now, as you're paddling, so once you pop it out, once you're through the surf, it starts to fill up, fills up a few inches, and then as you start paddling, it'll continue to fill up. Now, once you put the pipe in, the water can't get out the outlet, and it fills up to the top of the outlet, and then starts sucking out here. So we'll have a look at the bottom, and you can see the Venturis. So there's your inlet. The water goes in and gets pushed in. There's your outlet. Once it gets to the top of the pipe, it starts sucking out, and that means you've got a completely circulating self-sufficient live bait tank with no need for batteries pumps or aerators or anything it's completely cycling fresh water as long as you're moving a little bit and even if you're still it's still exchanging a bit of water because I, I tried that as well and you could see like even if i unplugged everything there's still a bit of water circulation through the two holes so it's a game changer i'm going to be cheering because i can keep my liveys uh, going the whole time i don't have to worry i used to use that, that orange bucket and I'd have to change it like every every five to ten minutes. I'd have to change it. If I had six like slimies in there, I'd have to change it like every five minutes to keep them fresh. Otherwise, they'd start dropping off. So this is going to be a big deal, make life a lot easier. Plus, it's an extra storage unit if I don't want to use it like that. So very excited to use that. Oh, <laughs> very excited to get stuck into the live baiting. And then we move to the seat. Bit of a change in the seat position of my last since my last one. The seat is actually uh, slightly deeper. So I actually felt it like I jumped in and I actually had to adjust my foot pedals. Uh, the first time I paddled it, I was like, oh, this, this doesn't feel right. Um, but then I realized, because I'm sitting deeper in the seat, I actually need to move my pedals a bit more forward to crunch my legs up a bit to get my, my proper paddling position again. And uh, it actually makes a big difference. It feels a lot more stable. I quite liked the friskiness of the 475, but it was probably the least stable of all the kayaks in the stealth range. And now it's... Now it's not, mate. Now it's like on par with the, you know, some of the other ones, and and I think I guess that's a good thing for everyone. More stability is good. And Profish comes with four rod holders. Put my tethers on. I just stick my tethers in there, and then pull them out once I'm putting the rods on. Back hatch, because uh, they were concerned that people would get upset that you've lost some uh, space here because this has taken away the under seat storage area from in the main hatch. They've uh, actually increased the size of this hatch. So it goes all the way to the front of the seat now and a bit further back. So there's actually heaps more room in the back hatch. So that's cool. Plenty more room there. Might even think about putting a battery in the back there if I could be bothered. And then we've got to I put my camera boom on. Uh, one change is the, uh, I used to have a little clip here that I'd put my camera on just in front of the handle, but because the handle sit up, I've had to actually go to the side, but that's fine. It still just Velcro's on the same. And we've got our rudder on the bottom. And you can see the transducer sitting there. That's actually a pretty cool mod with the uh, sounder. And uh, took a bit of courage to do, but uh, once we're committed, it's, uh, the installation has turned out very nicely. But we'll get to that in a second. So it's the 475, so it's four meters and 75 centimeters long. And it's 60 centimeters wide. So pretty thin, but very fast. So one of the... Uh, Biggest mods was actually adding the colors. I did it the same way as the last one. Uh, so yeah, once again, check out the last vid if you want to see me just doing a bit of spray painting. But um, yeah, used Plasti Dip again, which is that vinyl spray paint. Uh, the good thing about the Plasti Dip is, if I get sick of it, I can just uh, peel up the edges and then peel it off. What I did do this time is I got them to make this whole section white. You actually can see where I didn't mask it perfectly here. You can see a bit of the white showing through. I should fix that. But um. Basically, I got them to do this whole section here white and paint the actual shape here as well of the V on the bottom. That sort of speed line sloping back. Uh, the idea was because the Plasti Dip, like the fluoro colours, need a base coat of white under them. Uh, and I thought I'd uh, re be really clever and request it white so I can just start laying on the orange. Which did work and it looks great, super vibrant. But it sort of backfired a little bit because they, they made the tip... 
go under the scratch pad <laughs> and so you could see the big line coming up here so to paint it i had to peel off the scratch pad and then um yeah deal with that so now i put a black scratch pad on top which is nice because it covers up when you could see the v i thought it was a bit too much uh, of a speedy shape so it was good to get the black back on anyway still got the bottom here to protect it from the paddle scratches and uh, after a bit of mucking around and putting the new scratch pad on it actually turned out really nicely so i'm very happy with the colors and if I get sick of them, I can peel them off and paint another colour on, which is, that's the beauty of Plasti Dip. Not cheap though, about 20 or 30 bucks a can. I got it online this time, so I got three cans for about 60 bucks. So not too bad, but uh, not too bad considering I get my colours, but it's not cheap. And next mod will be, I don't know, just adding my camera. I always have it on a suction cap. This camera might um, need a little bit of rejigging now though, so now that I've got my sounder here, because the sounder might take up a lot of that camera camera room or camera screen time it's going to be sort of shooting back here it might be hitting a lot of the sender but we'll have to have a look at the footage i didn't, haven't actually checked out how much it sort of covers the camera okay then we got the second camera which is basically just a rail baser hd mount uh it went on the back here i used to put it just here because it's a more rigid section of the kayak but because there's the carbon fiber now i have faith in it sort of being a bit more rigid here Plus I've got a HD mount here because previously I did put one here on a fiberglass kayak and it was a bit bendy, but the carbon fiber is a bit tighter. Uh, I use those um, tri-fold rivets again, so they fold out when you rivet them on and use the rivet gun, they fold out in like a sort of triangle pattern and actually put a backing plate on it. So you don't have to worry about uh, it ripping through because it's got a little bit of a, a wider area to sort of grip onto. And then that's four with the HD mount. So I'm pretty confident that that should be actually secure enough and sturdy enough uh basically a rail blazer mount there goes all the way down just onto the pole it's a bit of a hybrid pole i've made up actually from different parts i had lying around and that back camera obviously does that shot there through the surf and then once i'm through the surf i unplug and i swing this camera out to the side and that gets my side view and i actually usually adjust it up a bit and that's a really nice view when you get sort of getting a fish up against the kayak and it gets it's, it's nice to have sort of multiple angles. I can go straight up and down over my head and then bring it back onto the side when I'm going back through the surf and I want everything tucked away so it doesn't get damaged. Next mod would be the tiniest, the tiniest mod, but it makes a big difference. When I pick my kayak up, I'm typically picking it up from that side. And even though it's light, it's still difficult to handle if you don't have the right grip points. This little spot here is a perfect grip point, but usually it comes with a little loop of webbing, like about that long. And, um, just in case you want to attach a seat. Last time I put a full handle here uh, and just use those trifold rivets and put another handle just around here and I use this as one of the attachment points. But what I've found is I actually don't need, and because I'm working at the store, I realize because none of them have the handle, I've gotten used to using, using just a little loop. But I thought if that loop was just a bit bigger, it'd actually be fine to, you know, it'd make it really easy for me. So I just added a bit more webbing under there. It's a pretty solid attachment point. It's got a backing plate in it already. So I might at some point just extend it out, put a proper toe clip there and put two screws in there just to stop it from spinning around when I lift it up. But that's enough of a handle for me to grab the other side of the kayak, spin it around and lift it up on my head. And then we're away walking down to the beach. Uh, next would be this little strap here. Another very, very minor improvement, which seemingly is nothing. But once you're out on the water, it makes all the difference. The little button uh, there to get uh, some webbing over it to hold it closed. And I just use actually from the sound of the little P-clips that come with it, little plastic P-clips, just uh, tie a knot in the end so it can't pull through. Just a little bit of bungee and it's just basically a quick close just to hold it shut. And uh, that has definitely saved me in the surf, especially at, uh, at the bommy at Fido's. I've been knocked off before and luckily I had this clip closed so everything was safe inside and I didn't lose anything. And that way, because these, these straps are fantastic in the surf, super strong, but a bit more fiddly if you want to sort of open and close the hatch a lot. So saves a lot of time, saves your gear. Very simple mod and um, very well worth doing. <laughs> That'll save you a lot of heartache. Now, I guess we move on to the big one, the sounder, which is the most exciting part of this install. Everything else on the Profish is pretty much done for you. Apart from that, if you've got to add cameras, you can add cameras. If you want to add colors, you can add your colors. But apart from that, everything's set up pretty much ready to go. You can fish off it and you're ready to go straight off the bat. However, you need to think about how you're going to put your sounder on. And this new sounder I got 
it was a big one so I had to have a, put a bit more thought into it and last time uh, I wasn't a hundred percent happy with the way I had things uh, for various reasons which I'll go into now but uh, we'll go and uh, have a look at it all right here's the box bring it out into the light all right so this is what we went with Lawrence has been very kind enough to come on board again and fix me up with a new sounder I was reluctant at a point to go with another elite TI just simply because I had issues with the way I'd had it mounted being flat here but this area has now been taken away so I can't flush mount it anyway so the TI the TI5 was a great sounder I loved it for every reason except one uh, the way I had it mounted flush against the bottom uh, here and then basically sitting flat it had a lip around the edge and water would pull on it which made the touch screen pretty much unusable on the water so as a touch screen sounder with you know limited had some manual buttons but you know, I had some workarounds in the end which made it usable but it wasn't uh, in the end the best way to mount my sounder and it did eliminate a lot of the ability to use it on the water this um, new way I've got it is better plus there's been improvements on the sounder itself and I've also improved on my transducer um, mount and the way I've mounted or installed that which um, is going to be a game changer in regards of just ease of use and just uh, eliminating any drag that I had from the clip on one so I'll show you how it all sort of went down and uh, yeah this is uh, I'm excited about the way it all turned out I've only had that one quick run but it seems it's primo it's it's working really well so I'm very happy so I've got a little lunch bag the same one I used to use the battery oh these batteries are still powering along all my sounder and all my equipment very well FPV power these things are light uh, and that's 17.5 amp hours so that's lighter than say a 7 amp SLA and it powers uh, the sounder no problems for a whole trip if not two trips so big props to FPV but uh, yeah so just clipping it on seems to work so uh, quite well so far I uh, when I went for the paddle I was worried that maybe I had this too far forward and I might be clipping it with the paddle but it turns out it's actually a good spot I actually made this mount it's a lower mount than the one that comes with the sounder so I actually used this mount from an old uh, sounder I had and then used and unclipped this from the new sounder mount and just put a bit of pipe in the center here and uh, made a lot lower uh, sort of mounting point and this has uh, screws that could actually let it slide a bit further forward I was worried if I needed to slide it forward but turns out it's in a good spot might as well have it as close to my face as possible and it's not in the way of paddling the only thing it might be in the way of is this camera here so we'll have to uh, see what that looks like and make sure that the camera isn't blocked too much if anything Lawrence is getting uh, some sweet product placement in every film but we might look at uh, either mounting this a little higher or maybe having it on another rail blazer mount that comes out the side. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll figure that out. Let's fire it up. It's all plugged in and ready to rock. There you go. Another cool thing about this sounder is the old uh, TI that I had, see how it defaulted to the red box being around the chart, which means it's defaulted to the screens I usually use. And it's not only the setup that I was using last, but it's also defaulted to what, what section I had highlighted last. It didn't used to do that. It always default to this bottom touchscreen, uh, the bottom um, side scan, which is real frustrating because what I really wanted to be able to do is adjust this top one. And if I'd forget to put touch lock on and I'd, I'd have this one selected, I couldn't adjust my chart in and out, which is the one thing I needed to be able to adjust on the water. So, uh, but not that I need that at all anymore because it doesn't really matter because I can use the touch screen so it's all good but yeah no it's a very nice sounder very excited about using it in come snapper season it'll come into its own it's going to be a, a good 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 thing so last time uh, if anyone cares to go back in the video or knows uh, I had a clip-on transducer the transducer for these is quite big it's this is the it used to be the total scan transducer but now it's um, the active imaging transducer and it's even bigger this time <laughs> only slightly but it is actually bigger on a boat the bigger transducer is like oh whatever it's only marginally bigger but on a kayak it's like oh my god this thing's getting bigger and bigger and last time I ended up clipping it on over the side with a bit of aluminium um, but this time I sort of bit the bullet and uh, I decided to mount it on the bottom and drill a hole in the bottom of the kayak. So we'll flip this over and I'll show you how I did it. It turned out quite slick actually, so I'm really happy with it and it's gonna create less drag. It's gonna be a 
or in every way a better DL. So I'll flip it over and I'll show you. So that's the new, that's the new transducer installation and it is really cool. I'll get a nice close up. Uh, probably could have cleaned this sicker up a little bit, but I was a bit nervous. I just wanted as much sicker protecting everything as possible. So I'd probably given it, it couldn't have given it a nice finish, but every time I'd try and smooth it out a little bit, I was uh, I was taking the edges off that was sort of giving me that extra protection. So I uh, probably could get it a little slicker next time, but you know what? Uh, all in all, it's come out pretty nicely. So this is just sicker flexed on. Because the transducer actually comes with a nice big flat surface on top without any kind of mounting area sort of pushing it out, um, it was very easy just to load it up with sicker and just plonk it straight on and gave it a good nice clean and a little bit of a rough up, clean with acetone, a little bit of a sand so to give it more to grip onto and then plonk straight on and stuck on and it's not going anywhere. Like I reckon I could pick the whole kayak up by that. It's, um, it's very, very permanent until I want to get it off. To get it off, I'll probably, you know, put a bit of braid under here and then just saw it across. And then once we get it off, then we can slowly clean off the top. So all in all, that'll come off quite easily. The only bit that I had to do that was a bit of a uh, nerve wracking and a bit of an exciting adventure is uh, committing to drilling a hole just here. Now, it does, like if it was just a tiny hole like that, I'd feel great, but it isn't because you've got to actually account for the plug at the end of the transistor. So we end up with a hole about, you know, that big. Um, once it sort of started going through, I was like, all right, well, we're doing it now. So basically the hole straight here, um, I got one of the Venturi covers. This is actually one of the covers that comes from the uh, footwell here. So I just got another one of them from work. I removed this section here. So it was a nice U shape to cater for the cable to go through. Drilled the hole, the hole's about here. So I've still got about a centimeter plus. I loaded this hole up, loaded all of this area up with Sika and then loaded the actual cap up and then taped it all down really heavy with some weight on it. And once it was sort of weighted down, it held the cable in very nicely. So the holes actually sits about here. So there's basically at least maybe a centimetre and a half of sicker all the way around it, plus on top of it, plus underneath. So I don't think it's going to leak anytime soon. But yeah, I'm very happy with the install. Way less drag than having the clip on. Way slicker through the water. Anyone actually thinking about doing an install like that, um, couple of tips uh, when I did it uh, I drilled the hole in first I, well, I measured it up stuck on the transducer made sure it was firm so I gave it a day to dry and then the next day I drilled the hole maybe two centimeters in front of where the cable would feed back in and go in uh, and then to feed it through the real trick was see there's a foam stringer that go, runs up and down here but uh, by the time you've gone into the middle you could pretty much just poke your finger through and knock out some of that foam and then once you did and if you took out this rod holder, you could actually look in and because it's just, it's only right about here, you could actually see very clearly the cable poking through and where your finger would wiggle. I thought it was going to be a lot harder to get the cable from here all the way to in here, but it actually turned out to be really easy. Once I'd removed that rod holder and then I just drilled a hole in here. So I used another one of those Venturi covers. This is the old style Venturi cover. Drilled the exact same size hole in here to fit that cable through. Once I drilled that hole, I fed the tape measure in there and I knew which length it was needed to be because I'd measure it on the outside first. And then I just fed it in and the tape measure just ran straight along the edge here. It was too easy. Basically fed in, just pushed itself right along the edge, popped out here. And then I just had to grab the two ends, tape them together with some masking tape, feed them back in carefully and then just slowly pull it back through. And then it ran the cable through myself. So all the rest of the transducer cable, which there is a lot of on that sounder, and it's quite thick and heavy. So you really want it all inside the hull and not sitting inside your fish hatch where you have to deal with it. So it was a very nice tidy way to do it in the end. And it just pops out the bottom there. Very nice. And then straight to the sounder. And then we just pop it on after we're through the surf. So yeah, that's it. It's pretty much uh, the new weapon. I'm glad I got to show it off this time. I've been sort of desperately trying to get this video done so we finally got something up but this is all going to be featuring very heavily in the channel uh please throw any questions on this one i know these typically get quite a few questions so send them through and i'll try and answer as many as possible but uh yeah i'll see you on the next vid next one big fish from this kayak hopefully